Welcome back to an exciting video and what we're going to do today is we're going to build the ultimate 80s Zach Wild tone one tone to rule them all That is correct um, when I'm playing live or when I use this tone on my YouTube channel, this is the one tone that I get asked the most questions about, without a doubt. And on my intro music, this is the tone that I use for the guitar solo on that. Now, granted, I was using a different uh, modeler at the time, and uh, but this is the same premise. It's set up the same way. Uh, the fractal obviously sounds a little better than what the original one did. I don't know. The original one actually sounded pretty damn good, to be honest with you. But the fractal is going to sound a little better because it's just, you know, we've got some years on it and we've got uh, better updates and better software and better this, that, and the other thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this on a fractal FM3. Now, this will work also for any amp. If you've got the amp and the correct pedals, this will work for any amp. And the same principle should also work for any modeler out there if you happen to be using a modeler. But if you do have an amplifier, if you are running an amp, this will also work. It's the same premise. Nothing changes between an actual amp and a modeler. It's the same exact setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started building this. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build it here first. And I'm going to show you the layout, how I'm putting everything. And then I'm going to... Um, uh, then we're going to test out the sounds and what do I mean by one tone to rule them all. And uh, it's going to be pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get this started here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in an amp block. Bada bing, bada boom. And what I'm going to do is I want, you want an amp that is very high gain. Uh, for this particular sound, because you know, uh, if you're going to be using this for an 80s tone or for a Zach Wild tone, then you're going to have to have a lot of gain on it because he uses a lot of gain. And of course, we all know that in the um, in the 80s, uh, they used a tremendous amount of gain in the 80s also. So you got to have a very high powered, uh, high powered amp with a lot of gain. Now, I know in the 80s, they say the big thing is to use a uh, EL34, which is absolutely not true, which is the Marshall sound. It's not really the tube that's going to give you the sound. I think that's a misconception that most people have. It's actually the circuitry that gives you the sound. Um, you can take an EL34, you can take multiple EL34 amps and get them to sound very similar, but if they're made by different manufacturers, they're not going to sound exactly the same. And where I came to this conclusion is I had a friend of mine who had an EL34 EVH, and the EL34 and the uh, EVH606. Now they share the same circuitry, if I'm not mistaken. And when dialed in the same, EQ'd out correctly, they sounded 99% exactly like one another. Uh, maybe the uh, EL34 maybe had a touch, a touch more brightness, which could have been dialed out. Uh, but with everything set up the same, so that goes to show you that it's actually the circuitry, of the amp maker. Uh, to where you get the tone from and not the actual tubes yourself. Now, I would have thought being, you know, that it was actually the tubes before we did that test on his two amps. And I'm going to tell you, running them through my Marshall 1968 cab, I literally cannot tell the difference between the EL34 and a 6L6 EVH. So it really just comes down to what your preference is at that point. But we're using an amp. And as you can see here, we're using this amp called a Big Hair. Now, this is a 6L6 amplifier. And uh, it's, uh, it is quite the beast of an amplifier. And so we've got our amp, and now we're going to drop in. Obviously, we have an amp, so we got to have a cab also. Now, I am going to use here, I'm going to do a search here. I'm going to use 4 by 12. type in basket and see if we can find it this way basket weave tv mix this is the cab that i am going to use for this particular instance let me go ahead and give this a name and i'm just going to name this one youtube so we know what it is 
And let's save it. All right, next we are going to drop in a pitch shifter. Then we are going to drop in a chorus. And stay with me here. Let's go with this uh, stereo tri chorus. Okay, we're going to drop the mix on this down to 40%. And we're going to leave everything else the same. Next, we are going to put in a delay. Delay one. We're going to go with a digital stereo delay. And I'll come back and set it up. Let me go ahead and get all the elements in. All right, we're going to drop in a reverb. Let's put in a studio. Where is it at? Where is it at? Studio reverb. And then we're going to put in an output. Now let's shoot back here to the beginning. Let's drop in an input. Now before the cab, we are going to drop in a drive. And we're going to use the T8, the T808. We're going to use the OD, not the mod. All right, so now we're going to connect everything together here. All right, now I'm going to drop in another delay here, and I'm going to put this one. Uh, this one's going to run parallel. So we're going to pop out, come into here, from here, down to here. And I've got two delays. All right, so now we're going to set this up, and I'm going to explain to you what's going on here as we move through all this stuff. Kind of give you an idea of what's going on. So on the drive here, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the drive down a bit. Now, you can run this down to zero depending on the drive. If you have a very hot drive, then you don't need any drive coming off of your drive pedal. You can actually just use it as a boost on the front end. But now the tone is we're going to set the tone up. And we're going to move this up to 654. And yes, I have tested all this out already. We're going to move this to 654. And we're going to leave our settings here exactly the same. We're going to go ahead and save this just in case. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our gain here. Uh, we're on our amp here. We are on big hair. That is correct. And we're going to set our gain to 721. And like I said, now this is a very high gain amp. So, and this is a very high gain sound we're going to go after. We're going to move our bass down to 330. We're going to move our mids also down to 330. You could do it at three. You could do it just as easy at three. Now we're going to move our treble up to 10. You have to remember in the 80s, the sounds were actually very thin sounding. If you can isolate a guitar track, there's really not a lot of bottom end on them. Uh, so that's why I'm setting it up this way, just to make sure that we do get that 80s sound out of what we're doing here. Now we're going to move our presence up just a little bit to give us a little shimmer on the top. We're keeping our depth here all the way down at zero because, like I said, for the simple reason, we just do not need a lot of bottom end. And that's going to let that's going to make the bottom end breathe quite a bit. And we don't want it to do that on this particular sound just yet. All right. So we have our amp section set up. We have our drive pedal set up. OK, here's our cab. We got our TV mix right here. I'm going to go ahead and put the same thing in this one here. Let's go put four by 12. Four by 12. Let's put in basket and that should find it again. Four by 12 basket TV mix. We have both of those in there. Let's go ahead and save that. Okay, now we're going to move over to our pitch shifter. And now I'm going to set this up the correct way. So we're going to take our detune here and we're going to go minus eight, 
or the left side. On our delay, we're going to go 13. We're going to leave our level at 100, and we're going to set this one full left, minus 100. We're going to come to Detune 2, and we're going to set it 8 positive. We're going to set our delay at 23 milliseconds. Level's going to stay the same, and we're going to push this one to the far right. We're going to set our input gain. Everything's going to stay the same. Here, we're going to move to 40%. And we're going to move our level to 2. Give it just a touch of a boost on that side. All right, we're going to go ahead and save this. And yes, I'm just in a habit of saving things. Um, that's just from using Premiere Pro all those years and uh, After Effects because they crash constantly. So you get in a habit of constantly having to save everything. All right, so now we're going to move over to our course. And I'm going to set this up. And I know what a lot of you people are thinking. Course? Really? Dude? Really? 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 Yeah, really. Really, really, I had this one guy, this guy trolled my page, and he said, man, he said, your chops are pretty good. He said, but you need to take your 1980s chorus tone, and chorus tone, and I can't remember what all he said. He was just being a turd, and um, and I replied back to the guy. I can't remember what my, what my reply was, but by him saying that, that just told me right out of the gate. The guy knew absolutely nothing about tone. Just because chorus was used heavily back in the 80s, does that mean chorus doesn't, doesn't, it sucks now because if you think chorus sucks now, then you must think Eddie Van Halen sucks because Eddie Van Halen uses a lot of chorus on his channel. So when that guy said that to me, I fired something off with Eddie Van Halen into the fact that he had no idea what he was talking about when it comes to tone. Tone is very subjective, but at the end of the day, the tone you're after is the tone that makes people go, oh my God. And this is one of my tones that generally makes people go, oh my God. So, and that's why I use it. That's why I have it set up this way. And I've been using this same tone for a lot of years. Um, now, when I did the grunge band and all that, I did not do use this tone for the obvious reason. But when we got back and started doing 80s metal and stuff like that, then obviously I went back to this tone because this is actually my favorite tone. So, moving on. So, we've got a tri course set up here. Uh, we're going to leave all that the same. All that the same. We are going to change our depth. Come on. We are going to change our depth to 66 to give us a little more depth on top of it. And we're going to leave our stereo spread. And you're going to see why I'm adding all this stuff here in just a minute. Okay, let's save that. Hang on, I broke my connection. Okay, now we're going to move over to our first delay. Now for this delay, we're going to move the milliseconds. We're going to move this to 251 milliseconds. We're going to cut the left-right time ratio to 75. And all this will make sense when I start plugging everything up. 20, we're going to 29.9. Uh, we're going to leave that there. We've got 15%. That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. So we're going to save that one. Command S. Now we're going to come up to our second delay. We're going to set this one at 480 milliseconds. Like so. Uh, we're going to set our feedback to 25. We're not, going to, we're not going to leave the post. We're going to set our mix here to 30 on this particular one. And control S. All right. Now we're going to move into our reverb block and get this set up really quick. Hang on, let me check something on my delay block real fast. We need to change this to get some more roll off on those highs. So let's move that to right there. That is correct. Everything else is correct. Let's save that. Let me go to this delay and roll these highs off a little bit also. Let's save that. All right, now let's get into our reverb block. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a studio reverb. Uh, I'm just going to leave this. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and set this to normal. You got to watch out on the FM3 because it'll start pinging this thing out really quick. 2.5. We're going to leave the room size at 30. We're going to leave it very, very small. We're going to leave all this set up correctly. Uh, we're only going to put in 7.5% on our mix for our reverb, and we're going to leave everything else set up at, as it should be. Then, of course, we have our output right here. 
Um, and we're going to leave all this set up the same. Here we have our input. And the only thing I do not have in here is a, is a gate. So we're going to drop a noise gate in here. Um, and for right now, we're just going to leave it where everything is sitting at. And we'll have to adjust that uh, accordingly once we get everything set up. So this is the sound. Now, real quick, um, if you're looking at this and thinking, okay, this is not set up correctly. Well, actually it is because it depends on what you want. If you are a pedal user, the way you're supposed to use pedals is you're supposed to put all your modulation effects preamp. Here's the amp, and they're supposed to be on this side. So normally you would put your chorus and your pitch over here in front of the amp. And you put your uh, your um, ambient effects, such as delay and reverb, post amp. But it depends on what you're going to do, because with me running these back here, uh, my pitch and my course in the post, then what it's doing is it's sending my distorted signal through those units. And that's why if you look right here, I've only got a mix of 40% on the course because I really don't need more than that. Now, if I was going to run this course pre, I would probably run this at 100%. But running it post, I only need it at 40 because the distortion is going to boost that signal so much. I just don't really need to crank it up all that high. Now, I do have my pitch. I do have it at 100%. But as you can see, I'm running 8% either side, and I want this signal to be full wet because uh, I want that separation between the right and the left. And it'll make more sense once I hook everything up and get this started, which is what we're getting ready to do next. But as you can see here, we have our input. Here's my gate. Here's my drive. And I'm going to tell you now, the secret to any tone, I don't care what you're doing, the secret to any tone is putting a drive in front of your amp that is correct. And you don't even have to run any boost out of it. You can turn the drive all the way down to zero and move the tone to shape your overall sound, and that will tighten up your amp sound tremendously. I don't care what sound I'm using. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. There is a drive before my amp. It makes everything sound better and tighter. Trust me on this. If there's one thing you do to a sound to improve your sound, that is the one trick. The drive before the amp. Even if you're running a high gain, a high gain amp like a 5150, take my advice, put a drive in front of it, turn the drive all the way down, adjust the tone to you know your liking. It will amaze you how much it will tighten that amp up and just make it punchier. Uh, that is the secret sauce to setting up a good tone. So on that note, we're going to wrap it up here. I'm going to leave my podcast room and I'm going to head over into the music room and we will start testing this out. And I think you'll understand what I'm talking about when I get it going. All right. So now we're going to turn everything on step by step and let you hear how this sound develops as we move along. So let me go over here and shut everything down. All right. So this is just the amp with nothing else added. This is basically, if you're running a 5153, you run directly to your amp and to your cab, no effects. And that's a good tone in itself, but it's still a little too wooly for me. It's not, it just, it's not tight enough. And it just, it's not solid enough. So like I said earlier, the best thing you can do for your tone is put a drive pedal pre your amp. Turn your gain down to zero or just a little bit of gain and then sh use your tone shape to shape the tone you're after. Now we're going to add the drive in. And you can tell it's already gotten a bit tighter than what it was. That in itself is a great tone, but it's still a little on the dry side. So what I'm going to do now is turn on the reverb. And you gotta remember, we're using a very slight reverb just to give us a little bit of depth. Now this is with the reverb and it's very sly, you can hear it show off. <laughs> and 
and it gives us just a, just a touch of depth into it, but I want more depth. And instead of having a big trailing reverb, I'm gonna add a, now I do my vocals the same way. When we're singing live, I put a little reverb and a little delay on both. And it kind of just, the reverb can get a little uh, feedbacky at times and they have some really nasty overtones. So even vocally, I use a blend of two. I do it on my guitars also. So now let's add in this slap back delay. And you can hear how fast that's shutting off. Now. Now we've, we've added the reverb to make it a little deeper, the distortion to make it a little tighter. We added the delay to make it a little deeper. Now we'll start to make it a little wider. So now we're going to add in the pitch shifter. Now, if you're thinking, dude, I don't have a pitch shifter. I don't have a, you know, a M3000 or anything like that. Actually, Boss makes a pitch shift pedal um, that works brilliantly uh, for the same thing. If you're running a live amp, uh, I can't think of the name of the pedal, and I'm sure somebody out there can tell me, but it is made by Boss, and it sounds absolutely fantastic. One of my buddy, buddies actually runs one in his rig since he does use an amp. He does use a fractal like I do, um, and it sounds equally as good with what he's got. So you can do this with a pitch shift pedal also. Now, like I said, here's the pitch shift. Let's start making it wider. <laughs> And like I said, this is my most asked about tone when I'm playing live or on my YouTube channel when I use it. And like I said earlier, on my um, my intro, I can't ask, I mean, I can't tell you how many people have asked me what I'm using for my tone on the intro song of my channel. So like I said, we got the pitch shift in there and now we widened it a little bit, but I want it even wider. I want this thing to be in a massive arena 80s metal sound. And that's what we're going to do when we drop the chorus on. Now the sound is just absolutely freaking huge. It is a massive, massive sound. And when you're playing live and you're running this thing to uh, FOH and you slam that first chord, I'll tell you, it, dude, it turns some heads because this is just such a massive, huge freaking sound. But what did I mean by one tone to rule them all? Well, let's check it out. When I'm playing regular 80s rock, 80s metal, this is the tone as it's set up, exactly how I will use it. And it works brilliantly for that music. And I use it for most of what we do. And it seems to, it just seems to kind of fit almost everything we do from that air. It doesn't really matter what it is. <laughs> And it works brilliantly for all those. And on that one, I just went to a different pickup and I rolled my volume down a little bit. 
So, carrying on what I was saying, one tone to rule them all. So let's say I want to play some Eddie Van Halen. So what I'm going to do is leave everything the same, but I'm going to push my mids pretty high. Now I've got my mids pushed. So this is what I use when we're doing Van Halen. And yes, I'm uh, going to get flagged like hell on this video. I'm going to get copyright claims all over the place. And it works fantastic. And especially if you're looking for that uh, earlier, that diver down air tone. <laughs> And it works for that absolutely brilliant. So moving on from that, and we we got it down. If I got my moods, uh, moods, my mids skip a little bit. I use that for just regular, pretty much any straight up metal. But if I'm doing like Van Halen type stuff, so now moving on, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scoop the mids back down. But now I'm going to push the bottom in. Check this out. Now, if we're doing uh, some White Snake, this is what I use for that. <laughs> So I use that when I do all my white snake, but it even gets better. Let me change guitars. This, I've got the bass pushed, I've got the mids cut, and this works fantastic. Absolutely fantastic for your Zach Wild tone. Oh yeah.
works fantastic for the Zach Wild stuff. So, and, and like I said, the nice thing about it is you can move things around a lot. You can keep the basic tone, turn the chorus off and on, turn the, uh, the uh, pitch shifter off and on to accommodate whatever you need. But this is, like I said, this is my one tone to kind of rule them all. And like I said, when I'm doing like grunge and stuff like that, what I'll do is I'll end up turning the chorus and the pitch shifter off. You hear this. He goes into that, uh, that D sharp uh, major seven. You listen, you can hear, he's got a chorus on that. So you can actually use it for grunge. So you can actually hear it on that song when you use on chorus. So that is my one tone to rule them all. That is my ultimate 80s slash Zach Wilde slash hair metal slash Van Halen slash everything tone. That is my all encompassing tone. So we're going to wrap it up right there. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, give a thumbs up, share it, and uh, if you get something out of this video, please like it. It's really weird because only 10% of my subscribers actually watch my videos, uh, which is kind of odd. I think I did uh, last month, I had 7,000 hours of videos watched, and it was like 9.8% of the people were from my subscribers. It was new people. So um, kind of odd. So uh, please like the video, even if you don't like the video and you just think I'm the biggest dork you've ever seen in your life, I don't care, still give it a thumbs up. You watch the damn video, <laughs> give it a thumbs up uh, or give it a thumbs down because it's just simply traffic. If you have any comments or questions, please put it in my comments section. As you know, I do try to answer all questions. It usually takes me a day or two sometimes, but I try to answer all questions all the time. And um, on that note, we're gonna wrap it up right there. So like the great singer Hagar says, if you miss the beat, you lose the rhythm and nothing falls into place. And for whatever you do, for the love of God, rock on.